Hello and welcome. Over the course of the next 15 minutes, we will explore the tender mind that is CJ Horsfall. From his dominant rise to his tragic fall, he's truly one of the greatest characters in American literary history. Now join me as we explore CJ Horsfall and Office A Mastermind. God bless you, CJ. When did you first meet C.J. Horsfall? I met C.J. Horsfall in my seventh grade year uh, in Woodshop. Me and him both sat at the same table, and he had a white shirt with green um, dragons over it, very, very seventh grade style, like. And I told him I really liked his shirt, which was true at the time. It was a very nice shirt. Now, looking back on it, it's kind of a, well, it's a dragon shirt. Oh, C.J.? Well, I've known C.J. forever. I mean, he's a really great guy. I mean, in fact, I saved him in the winter of 89. All right, there was a giant blizzard, all right? And he's, he's running and he fell. He was about to fall off a cliff, all right? And I grabbed him and we, we've been friends ever since, all right? Oh, man. Oh, man, it was great. Oh. In fifth grade, uh, it was me, Frank Chilino. This is before he got hooked on the smack and uh, CJ Horsefall. And uh, that, that's when we met was in fifth grade, when we would sing um, the Taco Bell uh, song about enchilupes all the time. All right. And uh, so fifth grade. Did something seem a little off about him? Something seemed a little bit off about him? Yes. Uh, he introduced himself to me with no pants on, so that was kind of weird. So, Fen, when did you first meet CJ? I met him a couple months ago in, in a pet store. He was buying monkey food. I don't know. Where, where am I? Interesting, interesting. Now, how'd you meet CJ? Uh, I met him like two days ago at Chipotle. You know, I live there. Okay. What were, what were your first impressions? Uh, well, I thought the restaurant was pretty good. The food was kind of hot. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I do, I do. I do. So, when you met the CJ kid, what did he say to you? Oh, but the onions were good. The onions were good. Okay. okay. Try and focus a little more on, uh, on, the, on the CJ lab, okay? Focus on CJ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what words would you use to describe CJ Horsefall? What words? What words? Outgoing. A rapist. Yeah, that's, that's just it for me. Did you tell him about how he met you with his pants off? Okay, just checking. <laughs> he was, uh... He was in my computer science class last year, and he didn't really talk. I didn't really talk to him, but uh, he always seemed like uh, he might be a nice kid, but at the same time, he might be uh, kind of creepy, like uh, like serial stalker kind of creepy. Well, I've loved CJ since the uh, moment I first met him. Uh, we were walking down the hallway, and I said hi, and he ignored me. CJ, tell, tell us about the past. I had a pretty good past. Um, as a kid, I, I like had to deliver things. I was obsessed with delivering them. Every time my mom wanted my dad to tell us something, I made her write it down on a little piece of paper and go give it to him. Um, just had to do it. Yeah, I remember there was this one time when I was little, I, I really wanted to deliver it. So my parents weren't home, so I had nothing to deliver. And I was getting the cravings and uh, there 
the mailman came to deliver the mail, and so I like threw a rock at him, and hit him in the head, knocked him out, delivered all of his mail for him. It took me four minutes. It's 200 houses. It's a lot. It's been a while since I've known this guy named CJ. Known him since he was a little scamp, you know? And he always, he always talked about, you know, pursuing his dream, becoming an office aide. It was around that time that I met a kid named Matt. Tell me about Matt. Well, I mean, that Matt, I mean, it's just, as he walked into the room that one day, I could tell he was just amazing. Like, he had such a great, like, you could say aura to him that just screamed awesome. He was just doing all these, like, magic tricks and everything. I was just, what's a good word? Astounded, you could say. And man, he just surely seems like a guy CJ would like. My friend Stefan told me about a kid named Matt who used to work here as an office aide, and I guess he was the best ever. They had never seen anything like him. He had impeccable timing. He could deliver passes like that. He never delivered to the wrong room. One time I, this is a rumor, but he, they, I heard that he even delivered a pass to the clock tower. Wow. That's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that was unheard of. How did you first encounter CJ? Uh, well, he came up to me as a little whippersnapper, just of the uh, freshman year. <laughs> you know how cute those freshmen can be with his big old glassy eyes and his uh, incorrect grammar and whatnot. And he came up to me and he said, I want to be an office aide. And I was like, kid, if you want to be an office aide, you be an office aide. So I, br I took him under my wing, you know. I was like, CJ, do this stuff. And he did that stuff and he did it ten times better. Then I knew how to do that stuff, and I was blown away, man. This kid really knows how to office aid. Thank you very much. If you could use one word to describe CJ, what would it be? Um, aid. Aid? Yeah, like, you know, office. So you're saying he's like the greatest office aide that ever lived? Well, yeah, I mean, pretty much. Why else would you be filming this if he wasn't? That's true. Well, really, I think any word pretty much fits CJ. He's like enigmatic. Would you say homoerotic fits CJ? You could say homo or whatever. Yeah, sure. I, I usually use about three words to describe CJ, which are all dark and handsome. Mysterious is the fourth if you really want to get into that. If you had one word to describe CJ, what would it be? Office aid. Office aid? But, but that's two words. Office hyphen aid. He's your man for the office. One word? Hmm. Best. It's a strong word. Are you sure it really fits him? It's a strong word for a strong man. I tell you, when office aides usually come in the room, it's a big disturbance. But when CJ walks in my room and hands me a pass, he enlightens the whole class in a way that I've never seen an office aide do before. It's amazing. I don't know what it is, but it's amazing. So, Adam Wolf. Hey, no, 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 you know, typical day, typical day. And I swear, the hand of God touched me. As I turned, I saw CJ glowing. It was, it was immensely beautiful. He then, he then stated to me, he asked, hey, you dropped your pencil. CJ is the best office aide we have in the building. Every time I need a pass, he's there all the time, all the time. I can't find anyone better than CJ. What do you want? You're not CJ. What did you do with CJ? Did you hurt CJ? No. What happened to CJ? No. What did you do? CJ, I love you! 
It's CJ! It's CJ! <laughs> You're freaking me Give out. Me a hug. I need no, I, I need to hold out the Alphazade Corvana. Give me a, it doesn't work. a hug. It doesn't work. Sorry. What would you say is your proudest moment as an Alphazade? Well, there was this one time. It was a couple months ago, actually. Hillary Clinton came to the school and I got to deliver a pass for her. She had to come pick up her gym clothes. Um, yeah, but that was that was great. Everybody was cheering me on. I was going through the whole hallway. Secret Service was making sure I wasn't, you know, gonna get interrupted or anything. It was complete total access. I was on CNN and everything. Look at him oh with that. Look at him go. Just wow. look at him. God. He's trying to open that I, door. I wish I had his stamina. Oh my god. Oh. He has to wait for the door though. God, there is. Yeah, see, look at him. Even people oh opening doors for him. Yeah, people open doors oh, for him. Oh, that's so cool. Because he. Wow. Yeah, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. Me and you have just witnessed a beautiful thing. A CJ moment. So many office aides nowadays, they only care about two things the fame and the money. But CJ Horsfall, now this guy, he's a real cut up guy, you know? He doesn't, he goes straight to the office and he will deliver that pass, you know? They, people don't even care about getting places on time. They're, they're just goofing around, going in the hallway, you know, like, who look at me, I'm an office aide. They, they just use it for the power, you know? But CJ, he really takes that responsibility into his own hands and he really delivers, you know? Like, if you, if you got some important stuff to do, CJ's your man. That's all I gotta say. Oh. So, when you saw CJ the morning of October 15th, what did you think? Well, I saw him in the hallway, and I go past him every day on the way to my class. And I saw him, and he, as usual, didn't say hi back to me, but that's, that's normal, CJ. But the thing that wasn't normal was he just, I don't know, something about him, you could just tell that something was bad or wrong, something terrible happened, and that he just wasn't feeling good in general. So CJ, this is just an average day of um, mm -hmm. passes, right? Yeah. Nothing too weird happened? That's good, that's good. deserved it. My chest cavity broke when that happened. He gave me a wrong pass. Shouldn't be that way. Boo! You're bad! You're a bad pass boy! Get out of here, bad pass boy. Oh man, it, <laughs> that was funny. He, CJ like delivered the wrong pass and I, I can't lie, I giggled. I, I definitely giggled. Oh, it, it was a ch few chuckles, yeah. A little bit scared. How did you react when you found out CJ had delivered the wrong pass? I wanted to give CJ a hug and tell him it's all right, but but he wasn't anywhere in sight. What? I was crushed, really. I was devastated. I couldn't believe the news. I nearly strangled the man who told me. I, I just thought he was lying to me, and I couldn't handle his lying. But he wasn't lying. He was unfortunately telling the truth. I couldn't handle it. Part of me died. I mean, you hate to see that happen to such a good guy, you know? He was like the best, you know? He, delivering his passes to people. I mean, he gave a lot of people hope, like me. I was down in the dumps one day and he, he came in with a pass to get me out of my study hall and I, I damn near cried. Can, can I say that on camera? Or, uh, yes. I didn't want to offend anyone. I frankly did not believe it. Frankly? Frankly, I did not believe it. I said, I, when I heard, I said, no, not CJ. You have the wrong CJ. There must be another CJ who did that. There are only two times in my life that I felt this way before. One is today, and the other was when The Who released It's Hard. 
Man, can't believe CJ delivered that note to the wrong room. <laughs> what a dork. Man, of course we're gonna laugh at him. Deliver the note to the wrong room. But he'll be okay. He'll be okay. More effective. DJ, CJ, how do you feel? I don't, I don't, I've never felt like this before. It's, I can't, I'm tripping over my own feet. I, I, I sort of forget where the right wings are. Like today, I thought there was an F wing. You know, I only go, they only go up to D. So, I don't know, I'm hoping I can get this next one. CJ, watch out for that door. CJ, I think, I think you wanted to CJ, CJ. CJ's been uh, acting really weird lately. There's been a, a lot of rumors going around. Um, one of them is that he's been like shooting videos on his roof or something. I don't know. Kind of weird to me. Right now it is the month of October. I think it's the. Oh, cool. You can even hear my toilet flush. What's in here anyway? Ew. Ah, oh, man. This is scary. Well, after the initial incident, you could see that something was clearly had to be done because. He just wasn't acting himself, he was doing crazy things, like he would deliver passes to lockers, he would just walk in the hallways backwards, so uh, we staged an intervention. CJ! CJ! Hey, CJ, come what on! What's wrong with you? You gotta come snap on, out of him, man. You're better you gotta... than them. You're better than them. Oh, no, CJ. I, I, I failed. I what failed. do you mean you failed? failed? You only failed by the cut of your jib. You need to get back in there and do what you are Do you're what you great love. Office do what you're meant to do. Hopefully, we shook some sense into him that he needs to start acting pretty much normal again. You're amazing, CJ. I was okay. amazing. You still are. I can't. Snap out of it, man. I it's okay, okay, I'll do it. We're, we just, do it. yeah, I'll I just it. need I'll some help. I'll do it, I just, yeah, I need some help. <laughs> so what are we gonna do? Rehabilitation. Rehabilitation. So I guess me and Dave's intervention with CJ was a gargantuan success because he has since joined the OAA, or Office Aids Anonymous, as they say. How do you solve the Office Aids problems? Well, you see, people often think it's more of a philosophical thing, but it's more of a mathematical thing, you see. It's helped so many people out and all over the world. See, like in Greece and Japan, you know, those Japanese office aides always got them problems. What we do is isolate the problems of the office aides. Wait, I'm not supposed to be saying this. This is too much information. Uh, it's more of a classified thing. If you actually have an office aid problem, just come to me. Things have really started looking up, you know, he's, uh, he's, my, he's, well, I, me for one, my conscience is as pure as the driven snow for doing this for him, and a new day is on the horizon. It's been a while since CJ left. How do you, how do you feel about it? Well... I mean, what can you say? It's just like, the hallways just seem so barren. It just wasn't the same. I'd get passes, and they wouldn't even mean anything to me. Like, before they used to be my ticket to freedom, now they're just a little generic piece of paper with my name written upon it. I'm getting really worried. No one's seen CJ for a few days, and you know what they say, a day without CJ is like a day without oxygen. They got these kids to replace them. They're like, I, I was so mad when I saw him walking through the halls. They're like, was like, what is this? This is not CJ. CJ wouldn't do it like that. CJ had a method. There was a pass. I, my mom had to tell me that I forgot my lunch at home. She delivered the lunch. All right. I was supposed to get that lunch. One of those office aides were supposed to get it to me. You know where they? They brought it to Mayfield. Do you know Mayfield? Those are our rivals. They couldn't find anyone nearly as competent as CJ, and they never will. Ever since CJ left, the lunch table just hasn't been the same, you know? I don't know. He used to go up to lunch lines and grab some food and stuff, deliver it to us free of charge. 
last office aid. Charged hundreds of dollars for that kind of stuff, you know? It's just not the same. From what I hear, he's disappeared. People are really, like, sad about it and stuff. I don't really see what the big deal is. I mean, I didn't know him. He must not have been that important. You know, I don't know what happened to CJ. I miss him very much, though. He's the greatest office aid Brush has ever had. And I don't know where he went. I'm very depressed. I need to find out. Let's go look for CJ. Mr. Macaluso, yes. it's been a few days now. How do you feel about the, the past incident? Um, you know, I, I was able to write about it um, in therapy, and I feel really badly. I mean, I, I've been dreaming about it. Um, I haven't been able to, I mean, it's not really a dream, you know, it's more of a nightmare, but I haven't been eating, um, I've been losing sleep. I am so sorry about Backwards. that. I have a pass. I have a pass. Let me see that pass. What do you think? This is an excellent pass. Good job! Thank you. Go! More passes! My God! What a fantastic young man! So CJ, what are your plans for the future? Uh, I don't really give a care. I'm gonna be a senior. But no, it'll probably just be one of those stupid Hollywood endings with me walking out in the, into the sunset with some girl on my arm or something like that. CJ. 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 CJ CJ CJ. With a virus. It's like zip zap zip zip.